so for those of you who haven't seen it, Debbie Prime is about this case um, in December 2012, where a woman was um, raped and gutted by six men on a bus and thrown into a ditch with her boyfriend. Um, and then you probably heard about the case thereafter. So that's the first scene of the first episode. Uh, this was designed basically as a six and a half hour film, which is seven episodes. Uh, so I just wrote it as a long film. Um, and it was a family friend of mine, it was the, the com retired commissioner of the Delhi Police at the time, who had seen my previous film and he put me onto this. He, uh, he suggested I make a film about this. I thought it was not a good idea. I thought nobody should make a film about it. Um, and then he said, why don't you read some of the files? Why don't you look at the verdict? The verdict had just come out. Um, and so he, uh, the first verdict was sentenced six men to death, uh, which was basically the judge trying to put together the entire narrative of what happened. So it was about 350 pages. So I had read that verdict and I was so compelled because, because of part of the verdict, the judge is trying to understand why these guys did it. That's part of the narrative he's trying to construct. Um, as well as the process of how these guys are exactly caught because it shows you know, how the cops go from knowing nothing to catching them and why they caught them, what the evidence is. So looking at that, I kind of said, this is pretty amazing because I can't believe the cops caught these guys. I can't believe they had, they had no identity. They were six anonymous men spread across North India, and they caught them in five days. How did that happen? And, and as I looked more into it, and there were certain gaps in the verdict I couldn't quite figure out, so I started looking at the cops. Um, the, the lead, uh, this woman, she was the Deputy Commissioner of Police South District. At the time, she led the investigation. I met her many times and her entire team. I got to know them. I uh, got to understand this from their point of view. Got to, uh, I realized that this is, these are the kinds of things they deal with every day. So on the one hand, we were shocked by the, the heinousness of this crime. This is a monthly, a weekly event that we know. So HBO was really the only major player kind of in the English language world doing this kind of show. Um, and I originally, in a very offline manner, developed it with HBO as a series. Um, so I was doing it as a film, and I met with HBO, somebody there who had suggested I do it as a series. I didn't know how to do a series. And that um, very dear friend, who became a very dear friend, who I met at the Indian Film Festival of LA, in fact, um, this guy David Levine, he ended up, um, he was one of the executives who oversaw The Wire. And so he gave me the Bible for The Wire. And he said, because he knew this was a police thing I was doing, and he said, read the Bible, give me some pointers, start writing it, and I'll kind of teach you the difference between writing a film and writing a, a, a series in the way we do it at HBO. The timeline of events of the five days uh, took about two years uh, because it, that was meeting different cops and asking them about their point of view on certain events and everyone had a different point of view. So I, I started to put together what I call the super document, which is about 100 pages long, which was just what happened every day at what time. Once I had that, the characters started to emerge um, from that and I started to merge some characters, amalgamate, this is still a dramatization of it, um, and just trying to get to the heart of it, as I say. So I would ask these cops, what did you do that day, that Sunday? And they would tell me what happened. And this one guy, who an actor Rajesh Jalen plays, the real guy I was talking to, I said, what did you do? He says, oh, I was trying to get my daughter married. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I was meeting a family um, to see if there was interest. And I said, how did that meeting go? He said, oh, it went badly, because once they found out it was the Delhi police, they called it off. What do you mean? He goes, oh, nobody wants to be associated with us. So it's something I have to hide in the initial meeting and once they discover it. And he says, I have taken so much pride in my own life of not being corrupt. He's known, he's like the Serpico of Delhi Police, everyone makes fun of him. He's like, I, I've, uh, I've taken so much pride not taking any. And I never, I never thought that would limit my daughter's future. One part of yeah, sit down. Sit down. Uh, this one, there's an understanding that, or maybe that, you have brought forth that I have not seen a lot of Indian filmmakers. You even living in Canada, right from Amal was still half steps, yeah. was still getting in there, sure. not understanding the language completely, yeah. everything that Sitar people believe. And this was a giant leap. And doing it all by yourself. It's not a place one wants to spend a lot of time uh, if they don't have to, I would say. Um, and I'm not offending Mother Delhi, it's not personification of somebody. Um, but uh, one of the things that always attracted me to Delhi was it was a place where there was such tragedy and terror and heinousness and just shit. It's just a bad place. 
and within that you find these people who are so good, and I and it always astounded me. Uh, and this cop, this woman, her name is Chaya Sharma, the real one. Uh, I've never seen met anyone. It was a very difficult thing, I think, for me. I can't speak for men, but maybe I can. That this was an attack on all women on Earth, and that was uh, that's where this whole thing changed. And the situation, her daughter, was it also was it clear? Or was it explained? Did, uh, so I have a daughter character. Um, and there's a whole thing happening with her in this. That was that was somebody else. That was another cop's daughter. Okay. Um, that another woman, Bimla, the one that Jaya plays. Okay. So it's another sub inspector. Her daughter was going through this. So I just made that change that to the name. Um, but that, that was the human way for me to figure that out. The um, title that was one of the things we didn't determine until I think three days before it launched on Netflix. <laughs> Something like that. It was just going. We were just batting around ideas. I, I just I don't actually title things until I'm in the edit. So I just leave it, and then in the edit, the producers and we, we kept batting things around. But I was so busy on the edit, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you guys sort it out. I'll see. I'll weigh in. And we just couldn't figure it out. And then we got to Sundance, and then Sundance was like, you guys need a title. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're right. So we just kept batting around more ideas, and nothing was coming. And then one of the producers, I think, said, why don't we do Delhi Crime Story? Because there was American Crime Story and American. I'm like. Sure, that's, you know, fine. And then it went as, to Sunday as a daily crime story. And then when Netflix picked it up, one of their requests was, can we drop the story? And I'm like, yeah, that'd be good because this is not a fable. You know, it's not, it, it's not, I don't want it to imply that this is a story. So that was very clever of them. And perhaps they had in mind what he was suggesting. Thinking about it. And I got on the plane last. And as I was stepping on, uh, I noticed that every, there was probably about, 200 men and maybe two women on the flight. And I gotta say, it is the worst version of society. Just to see that aesthetically, it gave me a feeling in the pit of my stomach of, like I, 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 I start to cry when I think of that. Um, so to me, there's actually, it, it, it's a form of help, I think. And that happened to be one of the sub themes of the project I was doing. So to me, it, it entirely revolved around that those characters, those, those those women who were in the show, um, which is why they became. I, there's only so much I could do by myself. On that. It was like I did the best I could, and then now the, those women have to take over and, and finish that show for me in a way, because it is it, it's just an awful, awful image. No, uh, I'm I'm enjoying my break, and I'm reading, and I, I you know I've been in this for six years, and I lost my. Just, just in terms of I was in it, I was in it for so much, so I'm just trying to emerge. So I am looking at lots of options and seeing what, what I want to do. I'm convinced I don't want to make a lot of movies. Like you said, I don't want to do a lot in my life. I just want each one to be you know, very, very, to me, at least to me, at the very least. Um, and I also think, uh, you know, I, I, I take a lot of effort to keep my life.